After the conclusion of the 2007 hovercraft project, there were many opportunities for further research and improvement on the craft to advance its versatility. During the 2008 continuation project, new lift, propulsion, and steering systems were designed and implemented. These advancements were aimed at assisting the craft in being more stable, faster, and more controllable. In terms of propulsion, it was decided that a larger diameter and higher pitch propeller coupled with a more powerful thrust engine was necessary. Pitch is the distance in inches forward that the propeller will move in a perfect fluid in one revolution, which is determined by the degree of offset of the blade on the propeller. The higher the pitch and diameter, the more air a propeller will move. However, this becomes problematic when the propeller requires more horsepower to turn than the available power source can supply. A powerful engine that doesn't destabilize the weight of the craft too greatly is necessary to solve this. A 5.5 ho horsepower wood splitter engine weighing about 34 pounds and turning at a maximum of 3900 RPMs was available. It was imperative that the diameter and pitch of the propeller be matched with the engine's horsepower and RPMs. Bob Lang of Universal Hovercraft in Illinois and Don Miller of Aeroprop in Oklahoma both stated that a 26 by 14 propeller was appropriate for a 5.5 horsepower engine turning at 3900 RPMs. Another property of propellers was learned from hovercraft engineer Mr. Philip Wassinger who stated that the outer 50% of the propeller's blade creates the majority of the thrust. Another focal point of the hovercraft research was the properties and design of a bag skirt rather than a single wall skirt. The bag skirt requires a double hull design to direct a portion of the hover airflow into the bag. This allows the hovercraft to be much more stable and achieve a better seal between the bottom of the skirt and the ground. First, a bag skirt cross section had to be designed. Several models were drawn before one that reached explicit parameters was created. The final cross section allowed for a maximum ground clearance between the lower base and ground with a 6 inch hover height. It was also designed to have a pressure differential of 1.5 to 1 so that there would be 50% more pressure in the bag than in the plenum and there would be a lower risk of skirt wear. Next a plan view of the lower base of the hovercraft was drawn, its size being in accordance with the lower fixing point of the bag skirt and keeping the lower hull within the 15 to 30 degree tolerance. Following this, we cut the base out of quarter inch plywood. The lower base was suspended two inches below the upper base using three inch number 10 bolts with two by half inch PVC pipe spacers between the two bases. The carpet trim that would be used to pinch the skirt to the lower base was then cut. Next, the sections of the bag skirt had to be laid out, cut, and sewn together from 6 yards of 1050 denier ballistics nylon material. This was the most difficult task, and had to be very accurate, as the shape of the corners at the seams determines what the cross section of the skirt will look like when inflated by the hover motor. While the mathematical method is far more complex than the template method, it is much more accurate. First, using the mathematical method, marks were scribed around the cross-sectional circumference of the base at one inch intervals. Then, a line was drawn from the upper fixing point to the ground contact point. The distance from each mark on the circumference of the bag to its respective place on the line was measured. These distances were recorded and marked on a straight line called line A. These points were connected to form an exacting curve and were cut out to be used as a template. Then the template was traced onto the skirt material and the skirt sections were cut out and sewn together along these critical curves. The process was repeated for each different angle on the hull. Once the entire skirt had been sewn, it was attached to the upper and lower bases using small bolts and carpet trim. To complete the lift system, a 4 inch diameter hole was cut at the center of the lower base, directly below the mouth of the blower in the upper base. Improvements to the thrust system included building an engine mount which raised the 5.5 horsepower engine 17 inches off of the base to create enough room for a 32 by 10 propeller. One inch box tubing was used to raise it to this height and one inch angle iron was welded to the box tubing to provide lateral and longitudinal support. A 32 by 10 propeller was bolted to the end of the crankshaft and the entire unit was protected by a three foot tall cage made of one inch by three inch 
wood wrapped in hardware cloth. Lastly, a throttle cable and kill switch were run to the pilot seat. A tachometer was used to determine if the engine was powerful enough to turn the large propeller at its rated maximum of 3,900 RPM, and a GPS measured the craft's top speed. In terms of steering, a fixed engine and propeller with a single hinged rudder placed in the center of the prop blast was implemented. Hinges were welded to the fixed motor mount. A 36 by 16 rudder made of quarter inch plywood was bolted to the hinges. Left and right control handles were attached at their midpoints to the arms of the pilot seat, allowing them to swivel forward and backward. Control lines were run from the bottom of the control handles to the rudder along each side. A third line was run from handle to handle around the bow of the craft and acted as a linkage so that the craft would be controlled with one or both handles. This system of lines and handles allowed the pilot to pull on the left control handle to turn left and the right control handle to turn right. Overcraft, test flight three. Andrew at the controls. Yank me. <laughs> Dude, don't walk in front. No, no, no. I don't know who's doing it.